Oh my god, not gonna lie, I feel like this whole thing we got going on is gonna crash any second. For today's video, I'm gonna tell you about all the books I read in January. If I had to use one word to describe this month, it would be chaotic. Um, and I think the books really reflect that. This month I ended up reading 12 books, which is not too bad. It's not my best reading month, but like, we're just gonna go with it. So the first five books I read this month, I actually did for my reading like Maddie Haley video. So they are very much not in my comfort zone of books, as in they are very, very big brains. I'm not gonna talk a lot about them and what they're about and like my opinions on it because you can just watch that video if you haven't, but I am gonna just list them real quick and then tell you what I rated them. So the first book I read was A Season in Hell, which I gave three and a half stars. Then I read Society of the Spectacle, which I gave three stars. Then I read 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts right now, which I gave, surprise, another three stars. The next book I read for this was On the Road by Jack Kerouac, and I gave this one two and a half stars. And the last one I sort of read for this was Infinite Jest by sort of I was a flop and I did not finish. So I only read a couple hundred pages of this and honestly that was enough. Um, but I do want credit for reading some of this because it nearly took me out. Okay, so after reading all of Maddie's favorite books, my brain was simply fried and I could not handle anything too big brain or dense or new. So I ran back to a comfort author for me, which is Emily Henry. I actually reread two of Emily's books. The first one was People Being on Vacation, We Love. So I actually read this one while I was traveling alone in London and oh my god, it set the vibes. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about this because like, let's be real, everyone has read this book. But if you haven't, I'll just quickly say this book follows Poppy and Alex who are like platonic or so they like wish BFFs. Here they go on a vacation together until one year something happens, they don't. Two years later, they reconcile on another vacation together and stuff goes down. I love everything about this book. No one is surprised by now. So we're gonna move on. Okay, so moving on to the next essential Emily Henry reread. We have everyone's favorite rom-com, which is Beach Read. Again, literally everyone knows this book, and if you don't, why? What are you doing? Quickly, if you don't know, this book follows our protagonists, Jenny and Gus, who are both writers of like the opposite genres, and they knew each other in college, kind of, sort of enemies, not really, and all these years later, they just so happen to be new neighbors. Soon they realize they are both struggling with writer's block, so they decide to write books from the opposite genres in hopes of like breaking it. He's gonna write a rom-com and she's gonna write like one of his like lit fic sort of books. They also plan out these cute like little day trips to bring each other on to help inspire them to write from that genre. So she takes them to like the drive-in for a cute rom-com date. He takes her to interview ex-cult members members. Just normal things. I absolutely adore the relationship dynamic between Gus and January in this book. I also recommend this one if you want a romance with a little more substance. It does touch on the topic of grief. This is also like really oddly specific but I do recommend this one if you love New Girl. Like specifically Nick Miller because I'm not even kidding. Like Nick and Gus, same dude different bonds. Okay, so next up we have a new thriller release and that is The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. Guys, when I tell you I read the description of this book and it literally had everything I could possibly want. Listen to this. Inspired by Fleetwood Mac, The Manson Murders, and in the famous summer Percy and Mary Shelley spent with Lord Byron at Lake Geneva's castle, the birthplace of Frankenstein, Rachel Hawkins The Villa invites you into a deadly legacy. Like, are you kidding? That sounds amazing. This book is dual timeline, so both of the stories kind of combine, sort of-ish, in the end. The first one is about these two friends in modern day who are staying at this villa where this brutal murder took place in the 70s. They're both writers. Their friendship's kind of toxic. The second timeline is leading up to this brutal murder during the 70s. I genuinely feel like this book had everything I could possibly want, but for some reason it did fall like kind of flat. Like don't get me wrong, it was a good book. It just wasn't amazing. I think I would give it three stars just because I was expecting a little bit more from the synopsis, but I would check it out. It's an easy thriller read, especially if like those things sound interesting to you. So the next book I read was very disturbing and that was Earthlings by Siaka Murata. I have read a lot of disturbing books before, but this one really, it really does something. <laughs> So pretty much this book follows Natsuki who just feels really lost and alone in her life. She really struggles to connect with her family and friends and just honestly like anyone around her. She also has a very traumatic childhood and you learn a lot about her trauma and her struggles as you read on. So as a sort of coping mechanism she has for her past and her feelings of like not belonging, she wholeheartedly believes that she is an alien 
and she's not from Earth, but she is put on Earth to save it. There's a whole lot of like other weird and icky things that go on in this book, so definitely check trigger warnings. It's a lot. Like a lot went down. A lot went on. If you read Convenience Store Woman and liked it, there's probably a chance you'll like this one, but I think if you read Life Ceremony by her and loved it, you will definitely love this one. I think I'm gonna rate this book four stars, but it does kind of like go back and forth, but it has stuck with me. Okay, so the next book, like, just thinking about it, I'm already getting pissed off, and that is Daisy Hates by Jessica Hastings, I think. Guys, like, I literally cannot with this book. I cannot with these characters. They have driven me literally to the point of insanity. Like, I wish I was kidding. Um, I can't really talk a whole lot about this book because it is the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe. This whole series, if you don't know, follows this very toxic friend group, very toxic relationships, and they're all rich. They all live in London. It's very kind of Gossip Girl-ish, kind of. I will definitely continue the series though, <laughs> even though it was so annoying. I can see why people like the series and I can see why people hate it. I honestly don't know how I feel because I really do hate it, but I also kind of like hating it, if that makes sense. I feel like my biggest problem with the series is it's marketed as a romance and it is definitely not. They are so toxic, they are so bad for each other and like, you should not be striving for that in your life. But if you do want to read it from the perspective of, like, this is not a romance, I'm just here for the vibes, for the drama, for the tea, then, like, go off. Because, like, that's where I'm kind of at with it. I think I'm going to read it, though, because I honestly, like, don't know how I feel. Like, I could not tell you. All I know is I wanted to literally rip my hair out while reading it, so. Okay, so after that, I picked up a romance that I was hoping would be less toxic. And it's a popular one that's literally seen everywhere, and that is Marriage for One. If you don't know, this book follows our main character, Rose, who gets married, like, marriage or convenience trope type of thing, to this grumpy lawyer dude named, I don't know, hold on, <laughs> named Jack. Oh my god, Jack and Rose. I personally did not love this book, which I'm really sad, because I know a bunch of my friends absolutely love it, and they're, like, ride or die for this book. So I was ready to ride or die, but, like, I just don't think it was for me. I would eat up literally any grumpy sunshine trope. But like Jack was like bland. <laughs> but I feel like the biggest thing I did not like about this book was the fact it was so long, like unnecessary long, and it was slow burn. And like slow burn romances, like they're not for me. Like I can't like get to the point, you know? But don't let me stop you from reading it because it has literally amazing reviews and I know a bunch of people love it. So if this seems like something you're interested in, just give it a chance. Okay, so I needed a break of romance after that, and it was snowing, so I thought it would be a perfect time to do a reread of Eileen by Otis and Moshvag. Guys, I seriously love this book so much, and I think I even liked it more on the second time. So pretty much this book follows a 24-year-old girl named Eileen, obviously. Eileen works at a boys' prison and takes care of her alcoholic father, and her life is really boring until one day Rebecca walks into it. The book is told from Eileen's perspective as an adult looking back on her life. This book is very slow and bleak in the beginning, but it does go so hard, like so hard, in the last 70-ish pages, so stick with it. It's worth it, I promise you. I really recommend this book if you love reading about unlikable and unreliable narrators, because that is Eileen. Also, they are making a movie based off of this book, so read it before the movie comes out. Okay, so the last book I read this month was actually a buddy read of my friend, and that was Redeemed by Lauren Asher. This is the fourth and final book in the Dirty Ear series, which is like an F1 racing romance series. I don't know. I really enjoy Lauren Asher's books in general, so I was not surprised when I loved this one. I think it might be my favorite out of all four. It's the first few pages of this book I did not expect. I feel like this one has a lot more serious tones than the other books in the series. Chloe and Sunny's connection in this book is literally everything. They really just like help each other out so much and there's like a lot of healing and a lot of trauma that these characters go through in this book. They really help each other get out of those dark places. I loved it. There was something though that went down towards the end of the book that I wasn't a fan of, but Overall, it was still a really good read. I feel like I would rate this one like four stars, maybe. I don't know. I also like rate literary fiction books and like thrillers and romances like on completely different scales, so I'm chaotic. And the last book I just started, it's literally the last day of the month, and that is a reread of Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. 
there may be a reason or a video coming soon that explains why I'm rereading this. But I don't know. So those are all the books I read in January. Hopefully my reading habits next month will be less chaotic, but let's be real. It probably won't. Okay, so I think that is it for today, but I will see you guys hopefully soon. Bye.